Welcome to Big Valley, West Elizabeth, the northernmost region of the state separated from Great Plains and tall trees by the Upper Montana River. It's a heavily wooded and mountainous region that is relatively mild in its climate. And at the heart of the Big Valley sits the small town of Strawberry, a small logging settlement that appears to be undergoing something of a transformation. By 1899, the modest settlement appears to have expanded in recent years and appears to display equipment associated with gold mining operations. However, this picturesque place appears to also have other aspirations. If not in the hearts of its people, then certainly in the heart of its mayor, Nicholas Timmins, though many in the town appeared to distrust him. Why? Well, in today's video, we're going to be looking into his secret. There isn't an awful lot there, but hey, times are tough. So, let's begin. Before we even arrive at the town of Strawberry, there is an encounter we can have on the way to it. When approaching from the east, we may happen upon a lost tourist. Oh, I'm in bad sorts here. I took a little jolt and have managed to get myself hopelessly lost. I am staying in Strawberry. If you could just guide me back. Can't think of a good reason to say no. Oh, thank you, thank you, sir. Shall I hop up there on the, on the back with you? Your legs work, don't they? Well, yes, I suppose. It's just a little demeaning. What are you doing out here, anyway? It clearly ain't your natural habitat. I, I, no, I'm just visiting. I, I, I'm from New York City, actually. You don't say. Oh, yes. There was some talk at the country club about this burgeoning little resort town called Strawberry. So I thought it might be quite the trip to see what all the fuss was. Perhaps make a few investments while it was still undervalued. Turns out I was made the fool. Not enjoying it, Dan? It's a town of splinters. If you could call it much of a town at all, I'd hardly stepped off the carriage and I'd taken in the whole place. I suppose some might call it charming. <laughs> Let me tell you, charm is not worth much these days. You have this mayor, a quite intolerable blowhard, a little bespoke woodwork, and he thinks this is a cultural hub. The man's completely deluded. Well, I should give him some credit. He must be quite the salesman. He did get me out here after all, more fool me. If for some reason you plan to spend any time in Strawberry, you may want to look into that gabbing mayor. Something is definitely off with him. What this tells us is Strawberry has quite the character in the office of mayor. A man of charm who's perhaps promoted Strawberry a bit too strongly and has attracted a fair few tourists from across the country. As apparent by this New Yorker, whether or not they're satisfied when they arrive is a different story. But this traveller appears to be quite suspicious of the mayor, so why don't we go into town and see what the fuss is all about. He shouldn't be too hard to find, as something tells me this is the kind of man who likes to be seen. Hey, move. Welcome. Welcome Good morning. to our fair city! Citizens, enjoy yourselves! Visitors, amuse yourselves. We are a We've simple had our fill of your antics town. around here. For people who believe in a better, wiser, kinder America. <laughs> Good day, kind sir. Hello. Enjoy our fair town in peace and be nice. Be nice. Morning, mister. Welcome to Strawberry, my friends. And to those that live here, stay here. We're a fine town for fine people. An oasis of culture and civilization in the West. American ingenuity, European sophistication, fine architecture, and above all, good manners. All here in West Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. Be well, my proud people. Be well and be happy. Temperance, diligence, forbearance shall make for a 
happy land here. All we ask is you give us a chance. A chance to make you happy. A chance to make you feel like this is your home. Since I've been elected mayor, I have reduced the criminal element significantly. But more than that, I have raised the cultural element. I know we have transformed Strawberry into a veritable Versailles of the West. A, a Venice in the mountains. Manhattan without the pollution. We are a sophisticated place for sophisticated folk. So welcome one, welcome all. Whether you're stopping for an hour or a lifetime, we embrace you. Hello. I know what you're thinking. This is a man who really loves the sound of his own voice. To summarise what we've just heard, the mayor, named Nicholas Timmins, believes he has revolutionised this town, transforming it from just another backwater in the west to a cultural centre and a tourist attraction. When he's speaking out in public, he doesn't appear to attract a large crowd. However, he seems to address the visitors to the town more than the residents. He also seems to believe that he's reduced the crime in Strawberry and brought a more civilised society forward. That being said, it's hard to take a statement like that seriously when he's standing literally right across from a very poorly hidden illegal moonshine still. What he believes Strawberry to be versus what Strawberry actually is do differ slightly. However, delusions of grandeur don't necessarily imply that there's something untoward about this man. So, let's see what else he has to say for himself. This is Strawberry, West Elizabeth, and I'm your mayor. And you're my... our citizens. And you'll be fair and proper and like-minded or we will not tolerate you in our town. Okay, that's a little bit more concerning perhaps. Anybody who's different and doesn't adhere to the mayor's view of the world, and the mayor's values by extension, I'd imagine, will not be welcomed. I am doing God's work! <laughs> I am shaping lives and raising the level of civilization in our region. Strawberry is a nice place for nice folks. An American place for American folks. We encourage those who ain't nice and ain't proper or ain't American to keep on moving. That's democracy. The people have spoken and they elected me. And I believe wholeheartedly in fairness, probity, and dignity. We can compete with New England when it comes to manners and fine breeding. We is proper, and those that ain't will discover that though we may be kind and fair, we ain't afraid of justice. The new sheriff has my blessing. It's an interesting detail to discover that the sheriff, Sheriff Farley, is new to Strawberry and was likely put in this role by Mayor Timmins himself, hence why he's got his full blessing. But when you take into consideration the main story and rescuing Micah Bell from the very sheriff's office where Sheriff Farley works, it actually makes sense as to why Strawberry would need a new sheriff. But what's interesting is, the mayor also tells us his values, fairness, probity and dignity. These are three incredibly subjective traits. What classes as fair, what classes as probity, and what classes as dignified are open to interpretation. Besides from making a point of expecting people to be nice, he's being very vague here. Hello sir, and welcome to Strawberry. Please make yourself at home, but treat our town with respect. Thank you. It's a magnificent little community we are building here. Almost Tolstoy, if you know what that means. I don't. Well, neither do I, but it sounds very interesting. And we love interesting people. Please, make yourself at home, but be nice. Now, as we mooch about town, we may hear NPCs utter rumours about the mayor. You can hear NPCs make jokes about how he supposedly locked his wife away in his house. 
What's interesting about this one is the interior to Mayor Timmins' house appears to be incomplete. I believe it did get reused as an asset in the credit reel, but maybe once upon a time there was more to this, and in failing that, at least more to the overall mystery behind Strawberry's Mayor. All we know about Mayor Nicholas Timmins so far though, for certain, is he seems to be more geared towards tourists who are a means for generating income, rather than the people already present in the town. And everything we know up until this point has told us that he isn't originally from Strawberry. He has no innate loyalty to these people, and he wants to change their way of life for his reasons. So, in the next encounter we have with the Mayor of Strawberry, we can find out a little bit more about how he wound up here. When you elected me, I promised you a welcoming mayor, a kind mayor, a sophisticated mayor, and I think I've been true to uh, my word. Howdy. Our town is now flourishing as never before. Yes, we have the occasional untoward incident, but... We also have our weekly musical soirees, and the Temperance Society has ten new members this month alone. The Barbarians shall not win here. <coughs> not while I have breath in my body. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Is it? Yes, it is. As mayor of this town, I, Nicholas Timmons, love all our visitors. <laughs> my family always wondered why I moved here. They blamed my failure at Princeton and a rather nasty rumor that went around about me, but it wasn't true. I, I wasn't... Well, the fact is, building a fine community here is doing far more good than living the life of some East Coast knob with a silly old great wooden camp by a lake and a bank. Just like my awful brother. <laughs> Family. My God, it's why we all ran away. <laughs> they were very unkind to my wife. Anyway, I do go on. It's unseemly somehow. So it seems he came out here after abandoning educational studies at Princeton University, following a rumor of some sort that he claims is not true. Whatever this rumor was, it clearly damaged his reputation. He also mentioned that his family was very unkind to his wife, however, unless she really is locked away in his house, he doesn't appear to have a wife. At least not at present. But a potentially reputation-damaging rumour perhaps means we are now barking up the correct tree. Through means of either violence or tying the man up as peacefully as you could possibly do that, looting the mayor will reveal a letter from his sister. It reads, Dear Nicholas, please write to me. I still think about you often and wonder if you are well and hope that you are happy. I know your feelings about mother and father, but it is not fair to punish me by association. I am still not sure exactly what happened at Princeton and why you and that other professor, I do not remember his name, left in such a hurry, and I do not want to know. I just want my brother back, that wonderful, caring boy who rouged my cheeks and braided my hair. All those years ago, I saw some photographs of Big Valley in a library, and it looks beautiful, but I have to admit I find it difficult to picture a city boy like you roughing it up in the mountains. I do so miss our outings to the theatre together. I am still hopeful of travelling out there to visit you one day, although Bryce's financial affairs are worse than ever now. Sometimes I think I should have taken a leaf out of your book and never married. Much love, Belinda. Interesting. But Mayor Timmins just said to us that his family were unkind to his wife. A wife that never existed. He's certainly hiding something, and his sister Belinda just corroborated that there was indeed a rumour about him whilst he was at Princeton. But the letter also states that his sister Belinda cannot picture him a city boy, living the tough life in a country town. It makes sense that it doesn't suit him considering we're literally witnessing him making an attempt at gentrifying Strawberry. But the other interesting detail that the letter tells us is that he and that other professor ran off together. So, is that other professor here in Strawberry too? And if so, can we find him? 
Well, Mayor Timmins does seem to loiter around the Welcome Center an awful lot, so it's as good a place as any to look for this other professor. The Welcome Center is run by a clerk, who just so happens to be the only person in town with anything nice to say about Mayor Timmins. We're lucky to have Mayor Timmins ushering Strawberry to the forefront. Yes, indeed. But this is the other thing that he says. It was our fine Mayor Timmins convinced me to come out west. Boy, am I glad he did. Huh. That man knows the future. It appears as if this clerk is a man that Mayor Timmins knew prior to venturing out here. Otherwise, why would he convince him to come out west? Could this be the Princeton professor mentioned in Belinda's letter to Nicholas Timmins? I believe it's entirely possible he wouldn't disappear into thin air. So if that professor is anybody in this town, it's almost certainly this man. So what kind of rumour could there possibly be that would cause a man to run off with another man, and then when he arrives somewhere new to start a new life, pretends that he has a wife? It appears as if Mayor Timmins had a relationship with a professor at Princeton. In a time when same-sex relationships were heavily frowned upon, it makes sense as to why that would cause them to run away. Being chased out from his old life, he became the mayor of Strawberry to take control. Nobody can possibly chase him out now. In fact, if somebody in Strawberry doesn't adhere to his policy, he can chase them out. It also explains why he's trying to renovate Strawberry into a bustling tourist attraction over a humble country town. The rural life is not what he wants. He was forced to flee from a lifestyle that he felt was more civilized, so, Strawberry is his desperate attempt to reclaim that. There's nothing necessarily sinister about that, it may have unintended consequences on those residents of Strawberry who may not agree with the prospect of their home being flooded with tourism, and their lifestyles being looked down upon by city folk passing through. He simply misses sophisticated society. It's quite a human story when you come to think of it. But that is the Mayor of Strawberry's secret. Like I said, there is less to it than it appears. And that brings us nicely to the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff. Maybe even check out our History Channel Decades if you like history of course. There will be a link in the description that you can follow if that tickles your fancy. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point. But until next time, please take care and goodbye.